Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Fago Maradian in Arlington, Virginia, where we're covering the 29th Annual Surface Navy Association's uh, Symposium and Trade Show. Uh, our coverage here is sponsored by Raytheon, and we're talking to Justin Reed, uh, who is uh, Marketing Manager at Hydroid, a subsidiary of Kongsberg, who is a leading maker of unmanned underwater vehicles and uh, a former submariner. I am. Yes, thank you. <laughs> it's always great seeing a submariner at, a, at the Service Navy show. Uh, tell us a little bit about the company and also what you guys have new. Obviously, the Remus vehicle is something that you guys are famous for, uh, and you, you're, you're displaying a new version of it. But tell us a little bit about the company and what you're uh, exhibiting here. Okay, so Hydroid is a company up in uh, Pocasset, Massachusetts, uh, headquartered in Cape Cod. Uh, we are... Um, the uh, sole provider of the Mark 18 program, which is a EOD MCM capability for um, uh, the EOD folks out in, in Fifth Fleet and around the world. We produce uh, the Remus line of vehicles also for commercial applications. So we have a um, uh, MCM variant. We also have an oceanographic survey variant, uh, all based on Remus technology. And EOD is Explosive Ordnance Disposal, and MCMs are mine countermeasures uh, uh, vessels. Um, you guys do have this uh, deployed, and walk us through the Remus line, which has been very successful for you guys, from the 100 to the 600 to, to what you guys have on display here. Right, so the 100 is the um, man portable version uh, rated at 100 meter operating max operating depth and then they have the 600 which is a 600 meter operating depth uh, the 100 is a two-man portable just imagine two guys on a rib boat they can pick it up they can uh, drop it over the side and deploy it the Remus 600 requires a crane uh, think 650 to 700 pounds uh, with a launch recovery system. And um, those both uh, come with full-time support from the company. Uh, moving on to the next gen uh, the new generation Remus, uh, what you have here is the, uh, the Mod 1 version or the Remus 100 version of NGR. So we refer to it as NGR. And, and what NGR brings to the table is uh, new core electronics in the tail. So we've put all of our stuff uh, there in the tail. It has a robotic operating system we refer to as ROS, uh, which is more kind of like a plug and play for payload integration. So one of the things that we wanted to do was move away from old technology, kind of bring it up to the, to the current technology, allowing customers to integrate their sensors a lot more easily than before. As you know, the, the Remus technology has been around for a while. It's a wildly successful uh, program, but some of the older vehicles are facing obsolescence, so we wanted to introduce a new version uh, prior to the total um, obsolescence of the old vehicles. When you're, um, one of the things also everybody's uh, trying to focus on is range extension, right? Trying to get as much power as, as, as possible. We talked to the uh, Atlas North America guys who supply your sonar for this. They're, they went to a smaller generation of sonar that's lighter on power. What are some of the things you're doing? Because the Navy is particularly interested in trying to get as much range and endurance as possible from each of these underwater systems. So the NGR, um, even in the Remus 100 now, is going to incorporate the 18650 cell of lithium ion from the Remus 600. So so it does have a greater range over the current version of the Mark 18 Mod 1 or Remus 100 vehicle. And from a price point standpoint, I mean, everybody's obviously trying to drive down the cost of these systems, particularly things that could get lost. And this is about a half million dollar system or so. It's not a trivial uh, piece of technology. What are some of the things you guys are doing to reduce that price point for the customer? Uh, well, for one thing, uh, the you know the, the overall form factor kind of really is staying the same. Uh, we do a lot of IRAD. We invest. Uh, about six to eight percent of our internal uh, profits back into the company. So by doing internal investments on R and D, we're saving the customers money on development. So we're not, you know, we're not charging the Navy to develop the next generation Remus. Uh, this is something we've done in house uh, with our own with our own funding, and then eventually that that savings will uh, pass on to the customer. What are some other applications, you know, as you look at this technology, you look five years out there, what are some of the features you want to bring to bear for the Navy customer? And what are, you, are some of the capabilities that you think would even be attractive on the commercial marketplace? Obviously, scientists use this system for climatological data, you know, uh, shore erosion and all that. What, 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 do you, what do you see as you guys look down the, down the stream at the technology and, and what's going to be necessary to remain a market leader? Uh, I think it's really going to um, be still be based on demand as far as the government contracts go. Uh, I think the Navy moving now really embracing uh, autonomous systems, you know, obviously works in our favor as a as a um, AUV company. But I think that uh, by continuing to to lead in development, um, that we kind of 
are, are helpful in dictating where the industry goes. So, you know, looking ahead, even with like with NGR, you know, the government did not have a requirement for longer legs on the vehicle, but that's something that we're providing. You know, they didn't um, have a requirement for um, upgraded autonomy or payload integration, but that's something that, we, that we're offering to them. And as far as on the commercial side, um, you know, UAVs are a big thing. Everybody's talking UAVs. Um, USVs have, you know, kind of been around for a while. Now the commercial market is, is all about UUVs, you know. Um, you mentioned universities. They're saying, hey, what can we do with a UUV? Um, uh, harbor security, you know, critical infrastructure uh, support, different things like that. So there's, the market is, is really, really growing outside of the DOD. And uh, I think that we're providing a product that works in the department as well as outside of the department. Justin, thanks very much for joining us. Hey, good to be here. Thank you.